Okay. Welcome everybody to the call. I'm excited to be here with you tonight. My name is Eric Johnson, creator and CEO of Teamsy. Uh, thank you for setting us up, Danelle, for this training. And tonight I am going to, uh, man, I'm going to, we are going to have some fun, Danelle, you're right. We are going to have some fun. How many of you, just real quick before I jump in, how many of you are already using Teamsy? A couple people. Okay, the rest are curious or what the heck is this? What are we gonna be doing? Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. Tonight, I'll show you Teamsy. I'll show you how it works. And more specifically, I'm gonna show you how to do a power hour in Teamsy. See, Teamsy is designed so you can get all of your business building activity done in less than an hour a day. Any, anyone wanna give me an amen on that one? You'll get it done in less than an hour a day because the whole point of this business is so that we can have a life, isn't it? So I'm gonna show you guys how that works. You're gonna absolutely Love it. But I also want to give you a little training on relationship marketing, which is the system Teamsy is based on. And this will probably resonate really with a lot of you because I think your hearts are in the right place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the system layered over the heart you already have for your business. It's going to help you build a business in less than an hour a day without, are you ready? Wait for it. Without being cheesy, salesy, spammy, or icky. Sound good? Okay. So let's dive right in. This is what I wanna to talk to you about first, which is how to systemize your success with relationship marketing to become a power hour boss. I'm gonna show you how to build relationships, how to systemize it, and how to do it in less than an hour. Pretty cool, right? Okay, so just to kind of introduce myself a little bit more, I know I told you my name, but my backstory is I have not been, I'm not like a computer techie guy, just so you guys know. That's not my background. I don't know how to put two pieces of code together. Um, I've been a professional business coach and consultant for 20 years now. I help people build their business based on building relationships. And I fell into the network marketing industry by complete accident about six years, six years or so ago. I found some products that really helped me. I loved them. And I saw how um, people were really interested in what I was doing. And it was really easy for me to share. And I thought, oh my gosh. What a no-brainer business to share something you love. How many of you guys are here for that reason? Yeah. And just to kind of give you guys a little more context on that, here's a shot of the family. I was working, I loved my job. I love, I, and I still do, I still do business consulting just a little bit on the side. I have a, a consulting company as well as Teamsy um, because I love it. But I was constantly working, you guys. I was always at work. I never was around these amazing people you're looking at right now on the screen. And I mean, yeah, I had some financial goals I wanted to hit. I wanted to earn some more money. Who wants to earn some extra money? Anybody that's something, yeah, we'd all like that, right? But really what I wanted was the opportunity to be with my family more, to have more time. You know, my kids were growing up without me, honestly. I mean, they were pretty much, I'd see them in their pajamas when I got up and left for work. And when I came home, they would be back in pajamas ready for bed, you know? So the network marketing opportunity was, was such a great gift because I thought, you know, I could start a business on the side with no investment. And it could take off and replace my income. How many of you guys would like to replace your income? Yeah. Or retire spouse, replace their income. There was only one problem. When the heck am I going to do this? How am I going to fit this into my day? I didn't have time as it was. So that's really what, what gave me the uh, kind of pressure to create Teamsy. Because I knew I needed a tool to help me do it in an hour. And then I realized soon after that everybody needed it. So um Hold on, let me just let this person in real quick. For some reason, it won't let me click it unless I stop my presentation. Okay, so that's kind of what kind of uh, prompted me to do Teamsy in just five years. Actually, I actually need to update that. It's been five years now. We Our anniversary was in December. So we've been in business five years. And in that time, we've actually helped more than 150,000 network marketers. I need to update this one. Pretty cool. We're excited about that. It's humbling. And I just want you guys to know, since we partnered with Zingular, it has been an incredible partnership. The Zingular family who've been using Teamsy regularly, their results have been, I think the official term is redonkulous, right? Is that a real word? Can you guys just go with it? We'll just pretend it's a real word. Redonkulous. Here's the numbers. Here's the numbers. 36 customers, 14 recruits over 90 days. How, who wants that? Anybody? And what they did consistently is what I'm going to show you tonight. So pay attention. Make sure you guys are taking notes, 
Okay. Now, before we dive into Teamsy, though, I, I do want to just give you a little background on relationship marketing. We'll go through this as quick as I can. There's some nuggets here for sure, though. And also, I didn't mention this at the beginning, but we will do a QA and a at the end. So if you hang out and you have questions, you, you can feel free to ask those at the end. We'll give you the freedom to do that. So relationship marketing. First off, relationship marketing is a philosophy of doing business that puts relationships and people ahead of sales and products. It's a philosophy of doing business that puts relationships and people ahead of sales and products. The reason why people are hesitant sometimes to join the business and the reason why sometimes your friends and family are skeptical is because they feel like people are putting targets on their back and trying to make a sale off of them. We put the people first. We put the relationships first. We flip it on its, on its back. Make sense? Okay. Also, this isn't some abstract feel-good concept. This is for you bottom line people. I want you to know this is a proven system that we follow always knowing what to do next. It's a proven system we follow always knowing what to do next. Who would just like to know what to do next? <laughs> You'll know by the end of this call. Okay? You'll know. Also, relationship marketing at its core is a lead generation system. It's a lead generation system. That's a system that initiates consumer interest or inquiry into the products or services of a business. I want you guys to just sh change your mindset on this. You, your business is not marketing and selling the great product Zingular has to offer. That's not your business. Your business is lead generation. That's your business. You are business owners. As the owner of the business, you have to, it's your responsibility to bring the business in. Make sense? So I want you guys to understand you're in the lead generation business. You're in the lead generation business and you can be busy and not do anything that builds your business in a day. Does that make sense? The activities that you need to focus on are the ones that build the business. Now, here's another really important principle. Developing and deepening relationships is your paramount duty as a business owner. Developing and deepening relationships is your paramount business uh, duty as a business owner. In other words, I want you to generate leads, not so you can sell them or recruit them, but so that you can build relationships with them. I know it's a little counterintuitive, but let me just say it again. You generate leads not so that you can sell them or recruit them, but so that you can build a relationship with them. And let me explain why, you guys, because there's a bigger goal. There's a bigger goal. We turn our relationships into advocates. We turn relationships into advocates by investing time and providing outstanding service. An advocate is somebody who's so excited about your mission and what you're doing that they feel compelled to tell other people about it. Do you guys have people like this now in your business? A couple, a handful. How do you turn a handful into an army? That's what this system does, and I'm going to teach you. Does this make sense? Now, in when your end goal is to create an advocate, you generate customers and team members along the way in big numbers. Does this make sense? My goal, for example, on this call tonight, is that all of you will be my advocate. You're going to be like, man, that guy from Teamsy was awesome. Teamsy is awesome. Some of you will become my customers. All of you will become my advocates. And because I'm going to focus on making you my advocates by giving you so much value that you're going to leave this call so excited and charged up about your business, I'm going to actually get more customers. Does this make sense? So put your focus on building advocates. Next, relationship marketing depends on trust. Relationship marketing depends on trust. Some of you heard me say this before. That means if you're a jerk, this ain't going to work. Okay, you cannot do stuff that is disingenuous and build trust at the same time. It's impossible. And a lot of what we are taught to do in our business comes across disingenuous, comes across disingenuous. Hold on, I'm just going to let some people in here real quick. For example, a lot of times we're taught things like, you know, um, don't tell them what your company is. Just hide that from them till, the, till, the, till you've generated some interest first, right? Like, don't tell them, oh my gosh, don't tell them it's singular. Whatever you do, don't tell them it's singular, right? We can't do that. Why not? Doesn't it feel weird when you find out what somebody's doing? Like, why did you hide it from me? That's weird. We're about building trust. I want you guys to know, how many of you guys would like to just be open, authentic, build your business that way, not have to do any tricky stuff? That's what we're going to teach you tonight. The original way we built this business was, would you like to have lunch or coffee with me? And then we'd pull out the binder, right? Surprise. I want to show you a business opportunity. People, people go running for the hills. Some of you went running for the hills when someone did that to you. So you don't have to do that. Now, here's the good news. 
with trust. Trust makes the work fun. Trust makes the work fun. You don't have to convince people when they trust you, you get right to helping them. And that's why we're here is to help people. Trust takes the ickiness away from the sales process. Amen, right? Nobody wants to be an icky salesperson. Does anyone want to be an icky salesperson? No. How many of you guys uh, actually really worry about coming across this way? That's me. I really worry about it. Does anyone hate rejection as much as I do? Uh, if Would you be excited to sign up for this business if they said, there's going to be a lot of rejection, but we'll teach you to deal with it, which is what primarily people train. I'm here to tell you, you will get very minimal rejection with the relationship approach. Finally, you get to go for yes. And that's where I'm getting with this. Forget the go for no crapola that's being taught out there. Getting rejected doesn't get you closer to a yes. Approaching people the right way does. Honoring people, loving people, honoring the relationship of what the sale does. And with this system, you get to go for yes. You don't have to go for no's. You don't have to persist through tons of rejection. You just get to help people. So I'm going to explain how we do that as we go. So let's talk about trust. How do you build it? How do you get to that trust? There's four essential ingredients to building trust I'm going to teach you tonight. So if you're taking notes, get these down. And then we'll dive into teams and I'll show you how to apply it in a power hour. So here they are quickly. Number one is chemistry. Okay, chemistry. Number two is character. Number three is competence. And number four is consistency. Chemistry, character, competence, consistency. All right, let's jump in. So chemistry is where you have common ground with someone. What is it about you they can relate to? Okay, chemistry is where you have common ground with someone. What is it about you they can relate to? Look, bottom line, people don't want to do business with someone they don't like. They want to do business with a friend. Isn't that true? By the way, they're not doing business with Zingular. They are doing business with you. Does it make sense? You're the, you are the person they want to do business with. So it's important that we find common ground. First thing you want to do is build rapport, build chemistry, find out what's going on with them. What, what, you know, ask them some questions, learn about them. There's, you're going to find where you have things in common. Number two is character. Character is when you demonstrate how much you care and that you're relatable. Okay, characters when you demonstrate how much you care and that you're relatable. I guess I want you guys to notice something about character. You don't have character. Character is something you do. We think it's something we have, but it's something you do. And we're constant, people are constantly looking at, a, at each other's character, wondering, is this a person I can trust? And the way we do this is by demonstrating care. It's by demonstrating care. How are you taking care of people? How are you communicating with them? How are you following up with your customers? And it goes beyond your business. How do you post on social media? Is it, is it selfishly or is it to bring value to your followers? How are you treating people out there? How do you take care of people who serve you? Do you tip well? Do you drive uh, courteously on the highways? Um, do you return the shopping cart in the tar Target parking lot? <laughs> Some of those are just pet peeves of mine, but I think they're measures of character. <laughs> I think they're measures of, the point is, is 24 seven, how are you showing that you care for other people? Because that's what they're going to read as your character. Make sense? The second piece that you need to be relatable, this comes down, especially in, in what you're sharing on social media. You need to be relatable. Forget trying to portray yourself as perfect. Be relatable. Make sense? Especially when you become successful in this business, you got to continue to tell the story of how you worked hard to get there. All right, number three is competence. Competence is when you demonstrate you're good at what you do and that you're a business person. Okay, competence is when you demonstrate you're good at what you do and you're a business person. I need to know before I become your customer, do you know enough about what you're doing to help me? Whether I need uh, to build my immune system or lose some weight or, or just build some vitality, whatever it is, whatever my problem is, I need to know that you know how to solve it. Does that make sense? You got to be competent. There's a lot of people representing Zingular, right? And so I need to know that you are one that um, can help me. So how are you demonstrating your competence? How, how are you showing your journey of learning and knowledge? I mean, some of you are probably brand new and you don't have much yet. So your job now is to learn, 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 right? 
How do these products work? Why are they so effective? How do they compare to the to customers? What are frequently asked questions? Learn all this stuff from your upline. And for friends and family who have seen you not be a business person, who have seen you with your pants on backwards, who don't believe that you're a healthy person because it's a new thing for you, you need to be demonstrating this confidence over time. I just learned this. Did you guys know that you need to drink more water? Here's why. Did you know that, right? Are you guys with me? That confidence is something that you can't do privately. You got to do it publicly. People need to see you so they can believe that you are an expert on this and they'll trust you. The second piece is, you got me hooked. I'm using these products. They're great. Now, why should I join your team? Why should I trust you to mentor me in the business? Do I believe that you are a business person? Okay. And again, this is sharing your journey, letting people know. I mean, whether it's just the very first, I got that first quick start bonus. I got, you know, I got a free, you know, I got a free backpack that says Zingular that they gave this week to everybody who hit a certain number. I'm so excited for free stuff. You know, all that, just little things even. Letting people know that you're hitting little success points in your business. I qualified for a free vacation to the Caribbean. Wow. Right? This is letting people know, wow, this person's actually making something happen. This is good. Now, look, I, here's the thing. You may not have anything going yet, and that's okay. And I don't want you to pretend you're something you're not. Don't ever fake it in this business. Faking it ruins trust. What you do when you're brand new or you don't have much going for yourself yet is you need to talk about your team, talk about your upline, tell stories about your friend, my friend Danelle. Oh, my gosh, you should see what she just did, right? So tell the story of your upline, lean into your team. Because the bottom line is, if you and I are buddies, and I'm not sure if you can mentor me, but I know you are connected to a winning team, I'll come along with you. Make sense? So the competence is yours to grow and your team's competence is yours to show off. Okay. Chemistry, character competence. These are important. You need to be demonstrating these constantly if you want people to trust you. There is a uh, principle behind this really quick before I jump into number four. And this is the principle that underlies this. If somebody wants to do business with you, they only care about three things. They only care about three things. Here it is. Can I trust you? Do you care about me? And are you good at what you do? Can I trust you? Do you care about me? Are you good at what you do? Now, real quick on this, this is, this is actually a really deep concept. You guys can spend some time mulling this over after the training. If somebody, if somebody believes all three of these are yes, you have an advocate. You have somebody who will go, who bend over backwards to help you in your business. And they'll be a loyal customer. If they're not sure the answer is yes to one or, or any of these, they will raise objections. They will raise objections. Do you guys ever get objections? Yeah, of course, all the time. This means that the relationship's not strong enough yet for them just to trust you. That's okay. So continue building the relationship, overcome the objections, help those people. But just know that's where objections come from. They're not sure yet about these things. You haven't really solidified this for them. Now, here's the other piece. And you guys, you guys will know this is true because you'll think about your own experiences. If they know the answer is no to any one of these, they will not do business with you and they will warn others not to as well. True? These three principles, can I trust you? Do you care about me? Are you good at what you do? Did you notice it doesn't even mention what kind of sweetener is in product number 12? Is this processed with soybeans or not? Like those are not the questions that matter. These are the questions that matter. Does that make sense? You can overcome the other ones. Number four, consistency. Uh, alas, you actually have to do some work to make all this happen. And we have to do it consistently, just like anything else, right? Consistency is the key to success. We can give you a very simple system, which I'm going to give you today. All you have to do is apply it consistently. Because the truth is, is just saying, trust me, isn't quite enough, is it, to earn people's trust. They want to see you do something consistently, and then they'll know they can count on you. And this comes down to everything in your life. Now, look, as you're building your Zingular business, the first thing you want to be consistent is a product of the product, right? How many of you are consistent products of your product? You got to be. I once had somebody join one of my advanced boot camps and ask me, you know, um, I haven't really been using my product for the past eight months and my business has been struggling. Do you think it's related? Hello? 
<laughs> of course it's related, right? You have to believe, you have to believe more in your product than everyone else if you want other people to believe in it too. So you got to be consistently product of your product. How about social media? We have to be consistent there, right? Sharing, letting people know that we're on the journey. You can't do this. This business doesn't really work as a secret that you keep from everybody, right? You got to tell people. How many of you guys are consistent about sharing what you're doing in your journey and people know that you're doing it? If you, Some of you right now might have felt a little convicted going, wow, I've been keeping this a secret. No wonder it's not taking off. That might be an issue. That might be an issue. We have to be consistent. But there's a, there's a principle here on consistency, just really quick, and then I'm going to jump into what really matters with consistency. But here's the principle, is that people respect consistency and they desire, desire it for themselves. People respect consistency and they desire it for themselves. When you guys do those before and after posts and people are like, wow, look at that before and after result. What's really more impressive is they know what it took. They know that it took some consistency, right? And people respect that. They want to be around it. Man, I need to be around you. I need to be around people like you. I want to get results like that. And I know I got to be around people that are striving for consistency. Consistency builds trust. It also builds your team because people want to join that. They want to be part of that culture. How many of you guys love the team culture? Probably even more now than even being a rep for Zingular, right? Okay, but let's talk about where it really matters with consistency. Where it really matters is with our relationships. Are you as consistent with your relationships? I mean, staying in touch with people, connecting with them. Sometimes social media becomes such a shortcut that we forget the magic happens person to person. But I want you guys to know that relationship building is a contact sport, which means you have to be in regular contact with people if you want to have relationships with them. And I know that that's time consuming, which is why I built Teams. And we'll show you guys that in a minute. It helps you do it really efficiently. So it takes very little time. But here's an important principle. This is probably the most important principle of the night. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. Investing time and connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. Okay, you guys got that down? I just want to give you an example real quick and we'll dive into Teams. So how many of you have ever received a letter or a card uh, from somebody that you love that has that handwritten message that just, oh my gosh, when you got it, it just touched your heart? Anybody? <laughs> Everybody, right? Hopefully. I always, I always joke and say, put your address in the chat if you haven't received an amazing card lately so that we can write you one because everyone should have it. But seriously, I want you to think about one that, that really meant something to you. And the next question is, did you keep it? Do you still have it? And I've taught this course, gosh, all over the world. And everybody always says, yeah, I keep it. How many of you guys have a stash a drawer, a box, or a chest full of cards and letters that you've kept over the years of people. Yeah, we keep them. Did you know we we treasure these things so much? I mean, when you move, we recently moved into our, this is our new home. We've been here just almost two years. Um, when we moved, I found I had all these boxes of cards. And do you know how bad I wanted to throw them away? Have any, have any of you guys moved and almost thrown them out? But then you're like, you can't do it. You just can't do it. So we moved them here. It's, it seems like even after people pass on, we save cards and letters above everything else they had. So it's amazing the value they have. Now, really quick, another example. Here's a birthday postcard. Have you ever got received one of these? This is a birthday postcard. It's from my uh, life insurance salesperson. Do you, you guys ever get these from people? My dog gets them too from the vet for her birthday. So it, is this a nice thing to get? Is it a nice gesture? I guess it's a nice gesture. Do you have any of these saved in the special stash? No, we throw these away right away, don't we? I mean, it's kind of like, nice, see ya. Why don't we value this as much? Now let's think about that principle. If you want to deepen a relationship, you have to invest time and connect with someone. This requires zero investment of time. We know that it's automatic. It's like a bulk mailing, right? So it requires zero investment of time. So we put zero value on it. The second piece is because this is a bulk mail out, it's not personal. So it's a double whammy. We put zero value on this because it's not personal and it required no investment of time. This is an important concept, you guys. As you're building your business, as you're figuring out how you want to generate leads for your business, there's going to be lots of people trying to sell you stuff. It's automatic. 
And you have to look at everything you do and say, does this show an investment in this person? Am I investing personally in this person, even if it's just a few seconds? And is this just to them? Because that's how they will value it. As soon as you bulk it, as soon as you do a mass email, as soon as you do a mass message, you've lost the impact. This bit, I'm telling you guys right now, 36 customers, what was it, 16 new distributors in 90 days. Those results are ridiculous. And that's because the value and impact of one-on-one -on -one communication is huge. Does it make sense? But I'm going to show you right now how easy it is to do in Teamsy. So let's dive back in there. But you guys got that? Investing time, connecting with people is the only way to deepen relationships. If you take anything away from today, take that away. Okay? And so we're going to dive in. But here's the thing. This is all great. Philo ph philosophy, principles, great. But you got to have a system. You got to have a system to do this. You got to have a way to stay in contact with all of your contacts. Know when you're going to contact them without having to think or plan, right? Know what you're going to say without staring at the screen all day, trying to think of the perfect message. Who's guilty of that? Anyone? And make sure that nobody falls through the cracks. This is the biggest one. Make sure that nobody falls through the cracks. So let me show you Teamsy because that's what it's designed to help you guys do. So first off, I want you guys to know that when you go to teamsy.com slash Zingular, teamsy.com slash Zingular, you can get a free trial started. Um, and where is it? Once you start your free trial, you'll be on this page. This is the first page of the Setup Wizard. Um, and we, we have the distinct honor of being endorsed by Zingular Corporate for you guys to use. And part of that endorsement is a sponsorship by them. So you get a special discount, one third off of the subscription Teamsy. So you guys have a special Zingular rate, which is awesome too, once the 30 days free is up. But you can do this for 30 days free to try it out. So if you haven't tried Teamsy yet, that's going to be one of your action steps tonight is to try the free trial for 30 days. So let me just walk you through this. This is the first page of the setup wizard. There's a little message from me. We'll skip that since you've got me live. Really what I want you to see first is this. Set your income goal. So we're going to set an income goal. We're going to give Teamsy the goal of how much money you'd like to be earning annually 12 months into the future, right? So a year from now. And you just set your number. You can slide this little ball up or down. And notice as I move it, the targets here in these circles moves. So I'm going to put it to my goal, which was 150000 a year. That's what I wanted to replace, okay? And so Teamsy's telling me, if I want to, a year from now, be making that income, I need to reach out to nine prospects a day, six customers a day, and four distributors a day. Okay? Make sense? Now, if you... Uh, if you're brand new and you don't have any customers or any distributors, then I would put 19 prospects a day to start. Make sense? Okay. So once you have that number where you want it, you click continue. And now Teamsy is custom set up to your goal. And I'll show you that in a second. Next step is we're going to get all your contacts into Teamsy. Teamsy is a contact management system. So you can put all your contacts in one place. You put your, you know, your team, your customers, your Facebook friends, your Instagram followers. You can put everything in here. Wherever you have contacts, you get them in one place so you're not digging through things trying to find people. Teams is cloud-based, which means that it will always be available to you as long as you have a phone in your hand. You can get to your phone, your computer, wherever. But I'll, as I'll show you in a second, beyond having all your contacts in one place organized, Teams does something really special with those contacts. It organizes them in such a way that you never have to think or plan and it keeps you in contact with everybody cycling through so that you don't ever drop anybody. I'll show you guys that in a second. It's pretty cool. So now we've got our setup done. We're in Teamsy. So this is the Teamsy, uh, you know, Zingler version of Teamsy you're looking at right now on computer. Of course, if it was on your phone, it would just look skinnier. I'll just show you a couple things here. So first, these today's activities. Do you guys see that? Today's activities? These are the goals for today. And this was based on your income goal. So there's my goal to connect with nine prospects, six customers, and four distributors today. I've also got a goal to share three times. Okay, so when I say connect with these three groups, I just mean reach out and say hi. I'm not gonna try to sell them or anything. I just wanna connect person to person. The shares are when I actually have a conversation with them and now I get to share a product solution for them or I get to share the business opportunity with them or maybe both. Okay, so those are shares. And then ads, my goal is to add three people a day to Teamsy. So that's just, I'm adding new relationships to Teamsy. Make sense? Okay. The way this works is these daily activity targets are based on a five-day work week. If you can do this five times a week, you'll hit your goal. 
pretty cool, right? And I'm going to show you guys that at this goal, which is $150,000 a year, it's definitely less than an hour to do this. Okay, super easy. So let me show you guys how this works. Um, first off, if you haven't used Teams yet, I'm not going to go too deep into everything today. Um, there's lots, I've got lots of videos and FAQs in the help center in Teamsy that you can get to, but I just want to kind of give you an idea that once you put everybody in Teamsy, you're going to give them a rating, like five star to one star rating, just like you're used to rating everything, right? The rating helps the Teamsy algorithm to organize your lists. So just to kind of give you an idea, if you rate somebody five stars, those are going to be like your best people. They show up first on the list. Okay. And then once you connect with a five-star person, which we're going to do in a second, you see Danelle's at the top of my list. Once you connect with a five-star person, they automatically come back on this list in 30 days. I don't have to set a follow-up with them. They just come back automatically. Okay. So they just cycle back. Now, if I rank somebody four stars, so after I get through my fives, I'll start seeing my four-star people. And I connect with a four-star person, they automatically come back in 60 days. Three-star people come back automatically in 90 days. Two-star people come back automatically in 120 days. So what this does is it lets me easily take a list as big as up to four or 5,000 people and stay in regular touch with them over, over a course of a year. Does it make sense? Now, you don't have to have a list that big, but you can easily manage a list that big with Teamsy. But it keeps you in contact with people without being a creepy weirdo, <laughs> right? Because you shouldn't be in touch with everybody every month. They're like, Why are you messaging me again? Hey, just checking in with you. Why are you checking in with me? I barely know you. So maybe that should be every three month type person. Does that make sense? In fact, I will tell you after working 20 years with this system, most people, you know, most of your contacts will be three stars and you'll talk to them every 90 days. And that'll be just enough to stay in great touch with everybody. Make sense. Okay. So now what happens is once you put those ratings on everybody, um, and you can always change them whenever you want, no big deal. But once you've done that one time, Teamsy is now ready to create your power hour for you every day. All you do is just log in and go. So let, let me show you how to do it. Here's the power hour module right here. Let me show you how this works. This takes all of that data you've imported, all your lists, and it just gives you five at a time to work with. So we've got prospects, customers, distributors, and then our follow-ups list, okay? So each one gives me five names just so I can't get overwhelmed and I can stay focused. And it tells me who's up next to message. Now, if I go over to my team page where the full list is, you can see, I mean, I've got over a thousand people in here, but on my dashboard, it's just giving me the five who are up next. Okay. So Danelle's the first person up. And when you do a power hour work from left to right, so start with your prospects. Danelle's the first person up. I'm going to send her a message. However you want to message people, messenger, uh, Facebook, Instagram messenger, text message, however you're connected. Now I do most of my messaging on messenger because that's where I'm connected with people. So I'm going to show you that. So Danelle comes up, I'm going to send her a message. Oh my gosh, what do I say? How many of you guys spend too much time thinking about what to say to somebody? Most people do. Most people do. Here's what I want you to do. Don't think too much, but I, I want to change your mindset on this. My goal when I reach out to her isn't to see if she's interested in Zingler. It's just to say hi. My goal is to make her day. Okay. And so doing a power hour is literally just making people's day. And so I call it the make someone's day mindset. That's where I want you to be is in the make someone's day mindset. So my goal now is to reach out to Danelle and make her day. I want her to receive my message and be like, Oh, that was so cool. And hopefully respond and say, thanks. You know? Okay. So how do we do this? So the easiest way is just use my scripts they are all in here for you. So click on scripts. Okay. And grab one. Now I'll just grab the first one off the list. Here's how it reads. It says, hi, Jane, just stopping by to say, hello. How are you? I hope your day is awesome. Okay. So this is my favorite script. I've used it about a million times, but look, I copied that and I'm just going to paste it in Teamsy so I can do some editing before I send it. So first thing I want to do is put her name in. Always use their first name in your first message on the chat. Always. Okay. Just a little pro tip. Remember it has to be personal investment of time and personal. And if you say, hey, sweetie, or hey, girl, then it's going to feel like, ah, maybe she just bulk sent this to 100 people, right? So I always start with their first name on the first message. So get the name in there. And then, you know, maybe a couple of emojis. I don't know if you like emojis. I like emojis. Let's see. I'll just put a couple in here. So you got your couple of emojis. Great. Now it's ready to go just the way I want it. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go send it in Facebook 
I actually have to send it there. So I'm just going to copy it real quick and toggle over to Facebook. It'll only take me a second. There she is. So we're going to send her this message. Paste that in. Boom. And send. Don't overthink it. In fact, a lot of people are like, do, do you spend time reading their profile before sending the message? And here's what I would tell you. I spend, I spend the time reading their profile if they respond. Okay? If they respond. Because otherwise, if they don't respond, I wasted all that time. So look, here it is. That was a Facebook message. I'm going to click the blue button that says log connect. That logged it in Teamsy. So that logged that I sent her that message today. Now check this out. I now have one done, eight to go. This little circle starting to fill in. Okay. This circle is my visual cue that I'm making progress. Now, if I come back to my power hour list, Danelle's gone. I logged to connect. She's gone for 30 days. She's in the cycle, right? And my list moved up and I have a new people on the bottom now, which is cool. So the next person on my list is Jay. So I'm going to message Jay. I'll just use that same message that's in my clipboard and I'll change the name to Jay. This is actually faster because now I don't have to think of emojis. I'll just use the same ones. Are you guys with me? Don't overthink this and just keep the progress going. Your power hour is basically sending messages, just firing them off. Okay, so there's Jay. We're gonna send her a message. Okay, great. So now we log that in Teamsy. Log connect, done. There's two done. Look, now two done, seven left. Do you see how quick this is? Imagine if I wasn't explaining it. I just bang these out so quick. And so my goal is nine prospects. So I'm going to just go send a message to nine people. Now, when you're new to Teamsy, it's really easy because you're just jamming through it. You've never messaged anybody, <laughs> right? You can just, but if, you're, if, you're, if you've been doing this a while and you want to see, hmm, what did I message this person last time? You can click on activity and it'll show you all of your, all of the things you've logged in the past. So you can see what the last message was. Pretty cool, right? Before you send it. Okay, so I'm going to work down my list until I tell that circles all the way blue. So in my case, it's nine messages sent. And then I go to the next list, which is customers. Okay, now staying in touch with customers. I know that you guys like to message people a lot the first month or two. After that, you can back off. You don't need to be in touch so often, but you want to stay in touch for sure. Because when you're in regular contact with customers, you guys, they order more product and they retain longer. Did you know that? Statistically, they order more product and retain longer if you're in touch with them. Think of it like going to a, a wonderful dinner and wanting to have your drink refilled, but your server never comes by. So you don't buy that extra glass of wine, do you, right? So you need to be present so they have a better experience and they order more and retain longer. Okay, so same thing. We're just gonna message customers. So my goal is six. I'm just gonna message six customers and you can use the scripts again. They're here for you. These are great. I love these, you know, look at this one. Congratulations on great results. Jane, you're doing so great. I'm proud of you. Congratulations on. Do you guys have reason to congratulate your customers? Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially with your products. You lost five pounds. Congratulations. I mean, what a great way to talk about your product without talking about your product, right? So use these scripts. I love this one too. You know, this is a great one for like, uh, what am I going to send to this person? Hi, John. How are you enjoying your slim down, uh, your trim down trio? Please send me an update and let me know how I can be of help. How are you enjoying it? Send me an update. This is a great question too for people because it's semi-professional, but also nice. It's not salesy, but people will tell you I'm loving it, which is great. Now you're in touch and you're like, well, you know, great. You know, it's coming to an end, whatever. So now you've got a great reason to talk. If they tell you they're not using it, then it's a great chance for you to coach them a little, right? This is why the retention is impacted. My finally one more, I'll show you my favorite script ever for customers. You can use this one with your team members too. Hi, Jane, just checking in to see if there's anything I can do to make your day. That one, oh my gosh, people will go nuts over that, especially these days. Oh my, oh my gosh, especially these days. So look, I'm just, I grabbed one and I pasted it. And again, you just do the same thing, you know, just do some editing. You can, you don't have to take the step of editing it in Teams. You can go straight to Facebook or text wherever you're sending it and edit it there. I have just personally sent the, the it with the name Jane enough times that I like to take that extra step and edit it before I send it. Does that make sense? Okay, so once you have it down, again, we'll do the same thing. We'll copy that, go over to Facebook and send it and log it in Teamsy, go to the next customer. So now you've got this pink circle filling. I'm gonna work my way down the customer list for the day until I've reached out to six and then I'm done, okay? 
By the way, uh, canceled or inactive customers, that's not a term your customers use. They're just customers. So keep all of those people in Teamsy and stay connected with them, right? Because just because I don't have my, my Zingular on monthly reorder doesn't mean I'm no longer your customer. Are you with me? It just means I went on vacation and I didn't bring it with me and now I have an extra bag and, okay? And I will tell you guys, just a little side note. Um, at the end, when you're nearing the end of the month and you're, and you're just a little short of qualifying, the best place to go always are canceled customers. Pull up your list of people who, no longer, who are canceled and just reach out, start saying hi to them. You'd be amazed how many would be like, oh my gosh, it's perfect that you reached out. I need more. Just saying, there's your little pro tip. You'll never miss qualifying again. Okay, where am I? Back to Teamsy. Where'd you go, Teamsy? Here we go, Teamsy dashboard. So once you've connected with your customers, however many is your goal, then you go to your team and you connect with your team the same way, okay? If you have a small team, this would be really easy. As your team gets big, this will be more important than ever, okay? I want you guys to understand a super huge concept. If you, if you came to me and said, Eric, how can I build a very successful Zingular business? Obviously, I'm going to tell you, you need to create customers and you need to recruit team members, right? What's the third piece of the puzzle? The third leg to the stool. You need to keep your distributors from quitting. Right? Does anyone talk, teach on this? People don't like to talk about it. The, the turnover rate is 50% a year. That means for every two distributors you recruit, one quits that first year. And so this is so important that, that I just want you guys to know there is one thing you can do that is incredibly effective at helping people to stick with this so they can be successful. And that is feeling like they have a relationship with you. Having a relationship with you is the number one thing that impacts retention of distributors. And it's not just feeling good about each other. Relationships, like I said, they take consistent contact. You have to stay in contact with them. That's why we built Teamsy. That's why we named it Teamsy, not Salesy or whatever. We named it Teamsy. The focus is building your team and keeping your team. So now you're going to go, the, the third part of our power hour, just as important as prospecting, is reaching out to team members, sending them a quick message. How you doing? How's everything going? Thinking about you today. Saw that you made your first sale. Congratulations. Whatever it is. You guys with me? After you get your whole team on Teamsy, you'll send messages like, you're number one on Teamsy today. How's it going? You know, and they'll be, they'll be like, LOL, thanks for reaching out. It's okay. The point is, is it keeps them in front of you. It keeps you connecting with them personally, personally. Just to tell you guys a real quick story. I know looking at the time without going off on too many tangents, I'll tell you the story really quick. Cause it was, it was a big deal to me when I was first building Teamsy. When I was building a network marketing business myself, I had won the big vacation. It was a cruise. It was a Caribbean cruise and the whole ship was, you know, company people. It was awesome. So fun. And, um, I was, it, Teamsy was new, but it was kind of taken off like wildfire. And, and people didn't know me as Eric. They just knew me as Teamsy guy, right? That's the Teamsy guy. I saw, I saw your videos on YouTube. You're the Teamsy guy. So people would come up and talk to me about Teamsy. Everyone was excited about it. And I was talking to this person who had just, she had just gone, gotten to a six-figure income in three years. Pretty great. That's pretty good. You know, I mean, man, you can't shake your head at that. That was great. I was like, wow, that's great. Good for you. And she was, she was using Teamsy and just so excited. And we were talking about her upline. And I, I said, you know, who's your, who's your upline? And she told me, and it was like the like super rock star of the company, you know, you know what I mean? Like the celebrity person. And I was like, wow, she personally sponsored you. And she's like, yeah. And I go, that's really cool. I said, do you, do you ever talk, does she talk to you? Like, do you talk to her? And she goes, no, not, not one-on-one. -on -one. And I go, you don't have access to her one-on-one? -on -one? She goes, well, I mean, I could, if I really need her, I can set an appointment with her assistant, you know, but no, I mean, we have group Zooms and stuff like that. I said, let me just ask you a question because you just ranked up really high in a short period of time. It's an amazing accomplishment. I said, would it be meaningful to you if your phone buzzed right now and there was a text from her saying, hey, I saw what you did, I'm proud of you. And uh, I'll never forget this. Because I was just kind of trying to figure out how important the team part of the power hour was. And 
this person who's successful in her own right, she started like crying. And she was really embarrassed. She said, I'm really sorry. I don't know why I'm crying. I'm really embarrassed that I'm crying. I said, it's okay. It's an emotional thing. She goes, I guess I didn't realize how much that would mean to me. You guys need to understand how much your relationship means to your team. Does it make sense? And it may not feel like it's that big a deal, but it is. So use your power hour, connect with your prospects, your customers, and your team members. And again, if you're brand new on the team, it'll be easy. When you have 5,000 people on your team, you'll need this to keep track of people. Make sense? Okay, so the first half of the power hour is prospects, customers, distributors. The second half of the power hour are follow-ups. Okay, our follow-ups. Now, when you have a follow-up due, you'll see this little circle and it'll tell you how many follow-ups are due today. How many of you guys are using Teamsy and that is a ridiculous number on your screen and you're like, I don't even wanna click it because it's like 100. Anybody, anybody in that situation yet? Okay, good. So I'm gonna explain to you how people get in that situation because you don't wanna be in that situation. We designed the follow-ups list to be where you put people when they have shown interest, right? So when they're cycling through prospects, customers, distributors, you're just staying in touch and you're just building relationships. When there's a reason, like I need to follow up with them, like they, like you shared a product with them or you shared the business opportunity with them, they need to be on your follow-ups list, right? Because you need to be following up to get them towards that purchase so that they can get the help they need. If you're if you're staying in touch with your customers and they there's a reason to, to that you need to follow up, you need to put them on your follow-ups list. So your follow-ups list is for when you have a specific reason to follow up with them. And really the ideal situation is that this is your pipeline of interested people. So you're connecting with prospects, customers, and distributors kind of relationally, having a good time um, building that relationship. The follow-ups list is where you get to be a professional. Make sense? So let me just give you a quick example on this and then we'll jump to Q&A. So I messaged Danelle in the beginning of our call, just. Hey, how are you? Hope you're having a great day. Her response, if she was, if it was a typical response, would be like, oh my gosh, thanks for reaching out. It's great to hear from you. We're doing great. How are you doing? Right? So now she's responded. Oh my gosh. Now I have a chance to have a conversation with her. So I'm going to message back and just try to, just try to have a little chat. Okay. Now, not every, I want you guys to know, not every conversation is going to be awesome. Some are going to fizzle out pretty quick. That's why she's going to come back on my Teamsy uh, a dashboard in a couple months so I can message her again. And over time, those conversations will get deeper. Does this make sense? Some people though, especially the people who already know and trust you, maybe you haven't talked to in a while, they're going to be so excited to hear from you. You're going to get into a great conversation. So just have a conversation. How have you been? What's going on with you, right? How was your Christmas? What did you guys do? Find out what's going on in their life. Ask them questions, be interested in them. And then the law of reciprocation is that you should now tell them what's going on in your life right? People always ask me, how do you talk about your business without being cheesy? You ask them about their life and then you tell them about yours. That's it, you guys. Your business is part of your life. Okay. It's different when I'm like, hey, I haven't talked to you since high school. Would you take a look at this video and tell me if this is an opportunity for you or not? And I'm like, you can take another 20 years to message me again, lady. Right? But it's different if it's like, how, how have you been? Oh my gosh, it's been so long. How, tell, me about, tell me all about your life. Oh, let me tell you about my life. Oh, one of the things I do is Zingular. I'm really passionate about it. Why? Because they helped me lose all this weight and now I'm helping other people. And it's just been the best thing, especially through the pandemic. You know, it's been a, an additional stream of income that's been a blessing to my family. And it's just been a labor of love for me. Wow, cool, good for you. Do you see how this is? People are going to be proud of you. Well, good for you. That's good. I'm glad you found something like that that you love. So I just want you guys to know, how do you talk about your business? It's just part of who you are. It's just what you do and why you're passionate about it. That's it. It's not like I'm trying to get something from you. It's just, this is what I do and why I'm passionate about it. You need to let people know. Okay. And when they're like, good for you. And you just say, yeah. And if you'd ever like to learn more about it, let me know. I'd be happy to get you some info. Bam. That's it. I'm telling you guys, this works so well. So we're using Danelle as the example. And so I say, you know, let me know if you'd like to learn more. She's like, actually, I think I would like to learn more. I saw those posts on your Instagram the other day with all those before and afters. I need to lose some weight. Perfect. All right, well, look, if you have five minutes, let's jump on a FaceTime um, and you can tell me your goals and I can see if it's something I can help with. Great. So, 
So just for an, this is just an example. Let's say she and I get in a FaceTime, we're talking, she's telling me what she wants to achieve. I'm now gonna recommend a product solution for her. How would I do this in Teamsy? So first off, you can see on my prospects list, she's not there anymore, she's cycled. So to get to her record, I just look her up in this little lookup bar. Okay. And I click and it takes me to her record. So this has all of the history and everything. And if I wanna log something, I click on connect. There it is. And so I'm gonna log this FaceTime that we did, for example, I'll log that as a, what is it, video chat, all right? I'll put all my notes from our FaceTime in here. And then I'm gonna click on share. See on the bottom left where it says share? So this was, I shared uh, some products with her. I'm gonna click on that. And, um, and as soon as I click share, it actually turned on this follow-up for two days from now. Now you can click on that and change it to whatever date you want. I'll put it for tomorrow. So when I log this share, it's logged now. You can see it's logged. Um, it's a share and it says in parentheses what I shared. It was a product share. And you can see the follow-up is now planned for, for tomorrow on her record. So if I go to the dashboard, you can see on my follow-ups list, there she is due for tomorrow. Are you guys with me? Super easy. So now she's on my follow-ups list. That means that she's no longer on my prospects list right now. She's only on my follow-ups list. So how does my power hour look tomorrow? I connect with all my prospects, whoever's up next, in my case, until the goal is done. Then my customers, until my goal is done. Then my distributors, until my goal is done. Then I see what follow-ups I have due. In this case, I'll have one due for Danelle, so I'm gonna send her a follow-up message. And it's just like sending a regular connect but it's a follow-up message. Let me show you how to do it. So I'll go to scripts again, and I'll get a follow-up message. Here we go, follow-up number one. Hi Jane, just checking in like I promised I would. What questions do you have for me? Simple script. Those follow-up scripts, by the way, some of you guys have been in the business a while, you're gonna be like, those scripts are unreal. That's what 20 years of refining stuff looks like, you guys. Okay, so I changed the name. I've got my follow-up script ready to go. Again, boom. Jump over here. There's Danelle. She's already, I already have her open. We send her her follow up. Send, done. I log this in Teamsy. Now pay attention to this part. As I log this in Teamsy, since it's a scheduled follow up, Teamsy is going to ask me, does this complete the follow up you had scheduled? So just leave that checked and then you can add another follow up. Okay. So now I'm going to follow up. Let's say I'll follow up on Monday and I'll leave myself a note. It's going to be follow up number two on Monday, whatever you want to leave yourself a note on. And when I create that, now it's done. So now I'm telling it, create my new one and complete my old one. Great. So if I go to my activity, you can see I have my follow-up scheduled right there. And there's the note. Whatever your note would be, would be right there reminding you what you're following up about. Cool, right? So real quick on this, before we do Q&A, the goal is to create tons of conversations with people. So you're not being an icky salesperson. Be really interested in people. Look for ways to help them. And as you uncover interest, then you share with those people, put them on your follow-ups list, okay? And the follow-ups is where the, the magic really happens. You guys have heard the fortunes in the follow-up. Just so you guys have a clear expectation on this, it takes typically, it, well, I think the statistic is 80% of all sales happen between the seventh and 10th follow-up, right? You guys have heard this. It's like, oh, I have to do that. I thought I didn't have to be icky. How many of you guys at the thought of doing 10 follow-ups are a little concerned that you're going to come across annoying? Okay. That's me anyways. And so that's why I really wanted to figure out how to do this without being annoying. So I'll teach you real quick how to not be annoying when you follow up, but you can just use my scripts to do it. But I want you guys to understand something about this. People don't respond to follow-ups, not because they're ghosting you or because they're not interested or because their husband's a jerk or because of the politics or whatever. They don't respond just because their life is, is, is still happening on a daily basis, right? So when you have somebody who's really interested and then you're messaging them and they're not responding, has this happened to anybody? It's like, she was so interested and then nothing but crickets. I followed up three times, nothing, no response. She doesn't need to open my messages. She's ghosting me. I'm telling you, most people won't respond to two, three, four, five, even six follow-ups and we give up after three, right? But then what happens is suddenly they do respond after maybe seven and they say, thank you so much for staying in touch. I really appreciate it. 
I want you guys to understand this really quick. Just real quick, by show of hands, how many of you are in this business because you really believe you can help people? You really have a heart to help. Okay, good. I want you to understand something. Until they make that first purchase, you're not helping them. You might be encouraging them, but you're not helping them. And to get them there, you have to follow up seven to 10 times on average. So I want you guys to understand if your heart is to help people, the only thing you really have that helps them is your ability to follow up. This is why, this is my, like my mantra is this, following up is an act of love. Following up is an act of love. It's not an annoying thing. It's not pestering people. It's how you love them. It's how you follow through on the promise. You said, I'm going to help you. And now you're following through on the promise. Does this make sense? So I want you guys to shift your mindset on that. And when you give up on somebody because they're ghosting you, quote unquote, nobody ghosts people unless you're weird, right? Unless you're coming across weird, don't you know? But they're not going to ghost you when they're interested, right? They're just busy. The dog threw up on the baby tonight while you messaged. They're making dinner. They're driving their car while you messaged, okay? They just didn't pick it up because they were busy at that moment. So um, when you give up on people because you think they're not responding, you've kind of sent them the wrong message. You've told them you don't care about them. This makes sense? Okay, so real quick, before I do Q&A, here's how you follow up without being annoying. There's two principles. And again, if you just use the scripts I wrote for you in Teamsy, they, they already follow these principles. Principle number one, don't ask them to do anything. Don't ask them to respond. Don't ask them to call you, text you. Don't ask them to RSVP for, you for your event. Don't ask them to do anything. Okay, don't ask anything of them. Because if they're busy at that moment, it's annoying. The second piece is make your follow-up short enough they can read the whole thing without opening it. Okay, short enough they can read the whole thing without opening it. Because in most cases, they won't open your message. Why won't they open your message? It's because they don't want you to think less of them for not responding right now. They plan to respond later, but here's what I want you guys to know. They will always read your message. How many of you can ignore, just got a message. How many of you can ignore that for a long period of time? Like you wanna know who it is and what it says. People always look at their message. So if you keep it short enough, they can read the whole thing on the lock screen. They will always read your message. They may not open it, they may not respond, but they will always read it. And this keeps you top of mind. And it reminds them of how excited they were about Zingular. It reminds them that you really do care. And I'm telling you that the other piece, and I don't have a lot of time to get in, I won't have time to get into it. But those, a lot of you guys know about this stuff. It's actually reprogramming their subconscious mind to feel good about you and Zingular. This is why it takes so many follow-ups to get a response, Right. Because as soon as you get off that call with them, when they're so excited about signing up, their subconscious says, we don't like change. We're not doing that stuff, right? And it starts keeping them away from it. Have you guys ever read Mel Robbins' book, uh, the, the 30 Second Rule? Have you guys ever read that one? Check that out. Check that out. That's a great one too. Talks about how quickly our subconscious mind talks us out of doing any sort of change. It's about 30 seconds. We have to take action within 30 seconds of the thought or our subconscious mind will stop us from doing it. It's a protection thing, keeps us safe. But how many of you guys wanna stay safe? How many of you guys wanna build your dreams? Yeah, so we have to go for it. Okay, does that help? All right, so I'm gonna stop teaching now because I've, I've fire hosed you guys enough tonight. Um, if you have questions for me, here's what I want you to do. Feel free to unmute your microphone and ask away and I'll go in whatever direction you guys need. What is the price per month? And can you pay it like in a yearly sum? Oh yeah, man. I like it when people just get right to it. Okay. So <laughs> again, it's, um, it's free for the first 30 days. Uh, yep. We usually charge $29.99 a month for Teamsy, but for Zingular, it's $19.95 a month. So it's a third okay. off, which is pretty cool. And you can do a 12 month subscription for 198. So okay. that saves you basically two months. If you do the math, I'll save you the math. <laughs> It's about two months. So you get, okay. you get 12 months for the price of 10 if you go annual. Yep. So it's okay. really inexpensive. If you guys break that down and mm -hmm. you know, I've done it, it's like 60 cents a day to have everything organized and planned in your business. And for those of you guys new, I mean, you get to write off Teamsy 100% as a business expense off your taxes. Um, 
I have a great friend and I'm not a CPA, so don't take tax advice from me, but I have a great friend who's a CPA and she specializes with uh, network marketing people. And she was telling me that, that, um, you know, you should be able to write off eight to $9,000 worth of expenses for your network, for your Zingler business, which is income. You guys, that's income. Like there's the income you earn and there's the taxes you don't pay. That's also income, right? Which is pretty cool. So if you have a job or you have somebody that's a W-2 employee in your family and you're paying uh, taxes, this business is going to help you pay less taxes, which is an, is an income benefit, which is really cool. Um, does anyone else have any other questions? Could you show one more time um, how you were getting to the scripts? I couldn't see that. Yeah, so when you're in the, when you open the connect box in any, any place in Teamsy, let me get back on Teamsy. So if you're in the connect box where you would log a connect, it's always the, right there. See scripts? Okay. Yes. If I, was, if I was on somebody's record in here and I opened the connect box, I'd see them there too. Okay, thank you. Sure thing. Now, one thing that's cool about this is, I didn't talk about this, but you can add your own scripts into Teams and have them there for yourself to grab. So you can create your own scripts. So um, you can put in all kinds of stuff. You can even put email scripts, which is something that I used a lot in my business. It was so cool is I would write these, you know, when you have somebody who's ready and you're like, I'm going to email you the links and the videos and all that stuff. You only write that once you save it as a script in Teamsy, then you can grab it whenever somebody needs that email and just change the name. Thank you. Did you, and I missed it. Did you talk about tags? I didn't talk about tags, but I can. If you, if you could briefly, I've tried to explain it to a lot of my team and there's a lot of people on here, but I really feel like, like when there's a promo or something, like I will tag all the people that respond that say they want info, then I tag them, you know, New Year's yeah. promo or something like that. Yeah. How to do that? Yeah. So tags, uh, the easiest way to describe, a tag is just a word you add to somebody's record, right? The easiest way to describe it is it's, what, it's the way you create groups of people. So um, you could use a tag, for example, for veterans. And then on Veterans Day, you could pull that list and wish everybody happy Veterans Day. But like what Starla's talking about is for a promo, tags are really valuable because if you have a, a promo that's like December 2020 promo, right? And let's say it's on, um, I don't know, let's say it's on Zing, right? So you could look, first off, I would tag, every time you make a sale, you should tag all the products that person purchased on their record, right? So I would have all the products that someone has had, right? And then what I would do is, okay, so we're having a promo on Zing. I would click on the Zing button first and I, everybody who ever ordered Zing, I would, go, I would go look at that and let them all know we're having a promo, right? So that's the first place I would start. But then you go through and like she said, you could use, you can create any tag you want. You can put in, uh, you know, let's say you're having a, um, a giveaway or you're doing something special. Like you tag every person you invite to it on that. And then, so that gives you that list you can grab. So outside of your normal power hour, you can use the tags to do lists. So in my, uh, just, to, just to let you guys know, I don't, I'm not a network marketer. It's conflict now. I do Teamsy, but I was a beach body coach. That's what I did. And I did a monthly uh, challenge group where I would lead them through a fit, online fitness program. So every month I did it, I launched it the first Monday of every month. So the, the two weeks leading up, I would have a group that was tagged, uh, you know, whatever, Monday, January, 2020 um, group. And I would tag every single person that I was inviting to the group, right? And then I would tag all the people who joined the group, joined, and I would, and I would leave all the people who, who didn't join, not join type thing. So then I would know next month, all the people I talked to who didn't join last month, I would have that list ready to go and be like, hey, I'm doing it again. You want to get in this time? So those tags really help you get really strategic with specific events or things that you have going on in your business. Um, the general power hour is going to keep those relationships warm and pliable so that people are more receptive to talking to you about Zingler. Make sense? And I did a full, Starla also want to let you guys know, I did a full training just on tags and it's in the help center in Teamsy, in your Teamsy account. So there's a full webinar that I recorded just on tags and several different ways to use them. Um, that's there. You can watch anytime from inside your Teamsy account.
Who's next? Eric, how difficult is it to take an Excel file and change it to a CSV file? You just and open upload it. it. Well, okay, so it's it's not difficult at all. However, if you well, I shouldn't say that. If you're used to using, uh, you know, Excel or any of those, it's very easy. If you've never done that, then you then it might be slightly more difficult. So let me explain it to you. But also, just know that we have our Teamsy staff can do that stuff for you. You can just send us the Excel file. We'll put it in your Teamsy for you. I don't know if you guys because I am an Excel guru. I use Excel for everything. Okay, and so I'm to make to get a, away from it. So if you use Excel for everything, all you have to do to make it a CSV is save as. CSV. Okay. And if you're okay. using Excel, Easy. if, if you're using like Google Sheets or um, you, then you do export as um, okay. CSV, but it's really easy. But however, depending on how you do your um, spreadsheeting, sometimes we have to clean the data up a little bit. And so if, if you're having any problem, what you do is you just email it to our team and there's a little help button floating around the bottom of Teamsy that you can create an email from. Here it is right here. See the little purple help button floating around? So look, you would just open this up and say your name, email address. I'm having trouble importing this file and then click attach <laughs> and they'll do it for you. But because like there's common mistakes, like for example, a lot of times you would put Eric Johnson and the computers need to know first name Eric, last name Johnson. So we would have to split that one into two columns, that kind of stuff. So sometimes there's a little bit of cleanup um, you know, I would keep lists like Eric and Lisa Johnson, and I would do Eric and Persand Lisa Johnson. I would, you know, I put my data in ways that computers are like, what is this sim weird symbol? And so sometimes there's some cleanup, but again, my team will do it for you guys. A lot of times it's easier for us to do it than to try to explain it. The bottom line is, is you don't need to be good at importing into Teamsy. You just need to do it once or twice, maybe once or twice a year. And you can always come to us for that and then just get you working in Teamsy, if that makes sense. Yeah, that helps a lot. So will it recognize if I already have somebody's name in there already? So if I already have Eric Johnson in there and I have Eric Johnson on my Excel spreadsheet, will it recognize that it has you in there already and then it yeah. will delete it or will it add it again? No, it will ignore you if you're already in. It won't, it won't duplicate it. Okay. So, um, which is, a, which in, almost all cases is very helpful, right? Because we don't want to duplicate people. If you happen to know two Eric Johnsons, you'll have to manually import, manually add the second one, <laughs> right? So you can manually okay. add duplicates. Okay. And we have people that are like, I thought your system didn't duplicate it. And my engineers are like, she added it manually. Oh, okay. You added it manually. You duplicated it. So, you know, it's just, it's all good, but you, we, we want you to be able to do whatever you want to do. We just try to make it easier for all the stuff we don't want to do accidentally, if that makes sense. Uh, but that's a question that comes up to now where people, for example, like they import their Facebook friends and then they add a hundred Facebook friends and they haven't been keeping up with adding them in Teamsy. So they'll go, what do I do? You can add the whole list again and it will only bring in the new 100 people. Okay, that's very helpful. I appreciate that, thank you. Sure thing. Oh, and because of this, though, let me just say this for you new people as you're setting up your Teamsy this week. Import in this order. First, import your team members. Okay. If you have like five or six team members, you don't need to import it. Just add them manually, right? It'll take you two seconds. I've had people spend a whole day trying to import a spreadsheet with two names on it before. That's why I'm saying that. So, but if you, you know, import your team first, then your customer list, then start looking at Facebook friends and stuff. Why is this? It's because Teamsy won't duplicate. So you want to have them in the right category in Teamsy, right? So for example, if you're my customer and because you're, I got you from Zinga the back office, I have your email address, your, your home address, your everything, all of your data. It, I want that data imported into Teamsy, not just your name from Facebook. Make sense? So team first, then customers, then your social lists. Is there a way to designate if they're like your first line or second line? Yes, you can add a tag when you're importing them. Okay. Um, now, if you're once they're in Teamsy, check this out, which is pretty cool. Oh, wait, I'm not sharing my screen. Hold on a second. 
I'm looking at it. It looks great to me. <laughs> All right. So once you're in Team Z, for example, let me close this thing out of the way. So if I'm if I go to my distributors, I have the ability to tag them as personally sponsored downline, sideline, and upline. So I can actually um, you can put all your personally sponsored people, you can actually set them that way so that they, you get a group. When you click on personally sponsored, you get your personally sponsored group. But in addition to that, I can add tags. So I can add any tag I want. It could be third level, okay? So then you tag everybody with that. So whatever tag you wanna add, you can add. And then again, that tag now, when I click it, would give me that list. Does that make sense? Yeah. So um, I've done this with, with a few executives that I've helped because they had such a large list getting organized where we, um, we put it, we did that. We brought in, we, we did the import level by level. So we took the, the full list and we split it up into smaller lists and did little group, group imports so that we could add different tags and we could also add different ranks. So if you guys have a really large amount of customers or a very large team, um, then, then that's what I recommend you do is, um, is split that spreadsheet into several spreadsheets of groups you want separate in Teamsy and then import them that way. And if that's, if that's a daunting idea, set up a one-on-one -on -one with my team. There, you can set a one-on-one -on -one Zoom up with my team and just bring the, the bulk files that you get from corporate and my team will walk you through that, if that makes sense. Again, it, you don't need to be an expert at importing into Teamsy. We just want you using it. So we'll take care of that part for you, if that helps. You may want, I, I will tell you guys this, is that you, as you get rocket in Teamsy, you may not want to have lots of levels in Teamsy from your team. Um, it just depends. Like I would definitely have my first level people. This is what I tell executives and above. First level, like you're personally sponsored and leaders, right? And leaders. And then, and then as you're talking to leaders, because I know as I know executives talk to their leaders, you say, I want you, you know, every quarter you say, I want you to send me people that I should have in my team Z. Who on your team is an up and coming star that I need to be in personal relationship with? Right. The other thing is, is you have people who, who have downline, but have kind of abandoned them. Right. So those are people that you want to adopt. Like if you have somebody who's still active, but they're not active, you know, so those become your de facto first lines. So does that make sense? But you don't need, it's kind of, if you have a, if you have a, a, a first line person who's super active and a great leader, you don't need to be talking to their team. Make sense? Because they're talking to their team. So you got to just kind of look at where they need you, need that extra juice. Um, but however, like I'm looking at Starla, like if Starla is my first level and she's rocking, I don't need to talk to her team, but I will ask her from time to time, is there anybody I should reach out to on your team? And she'll say, yeah, it would be really meaningful if you message so-and-so today. And she just had a huge win, you know? So then be like, great. So that it makes sense. So you spread this love out strategically and it really makes an impact. All right. Any other questions? Okay, so remember, teamsy.com slash Zingular, get your free trial started, right? You can set up the subscription end of it at any point during your free trial, but we still won't bill you until your 30 free days are up. Okay, so get in there and check that out. Um, just real quick, I'll throw a quick pitch out for this. For those of you guys who really wanna rock uh, 2021 and get started strong. Um, we're getting ready to open registration for my elite business boot camp, which I do once a quarter. And that's going to open on the 11th. That's Monday. And uh, that's a six week program. It's really eight weeks, but officially it's six weeks because I tag a, I give you bonus stuff at the end. Six week program really focused on building out that relationship marketing system that I gave you a little taste of tonight inside Teamsy. Um, it's, uh, there's two training, two 30 minute training videos a week, a couple live sessions, uh, private Facebook group. It's awesome. So, so keep an eye out for that. If you guys are already, um, into a team Z free trial, you should get some emails on that. I guess if you're brand new, you might not get emails on that. So just look for, um, a little alert on your dashboard in team Z that'll take you to a landing page. It'll explain a little bit more, but keep an eye out for that. The, the boot camp is 
an awesome program. And that's my passion project where basically you get coached by, by me and my mentor for about six weeks. So keep an eye out for that. But at the minimum, get your uh, free trial started. I do recommend you get a success partner for your, for, to do your 30 days with. So look around and say, who wants to do this? Let's do it together. Hold each other accountable to doing it. And um, we do this in our boot camps, and it's unbelievably effective. So you guys can do this in your free trials too. When you finish your power hour, take a screenshot and message it to your partner. Um, and if you're not sure, if you're not sure that your partner's going to hang in there, again, get two partners. You know, do groups of three so that you've got people that are that are hanging in there. But message it to your partners. It is so incredibly annoying when you haven't done your power hour and you get that from your partners that it will motivate you to do it. <laughs> It'll motivate you to do it because I don't want you just to, to put a toe in the water. I honestly want you to get unbelievable results. When we built Teamsy and, and priced it at uh, $300 a year, which you guys don't pay that much because you're singular, uh, $300 a year for an annual. I said, if somebody actually uses their free trial for 30 days, they should be able to sign up for an annual subscription on their 31st day. Um, from the income they generated using Teams. That's why we built it that way. And um, and we've always kind of focused on, you can use it for free and you should be able to pay your subscription forward from that 30 days. If you rock it, just take advantage of it. Does that make sense? So those are your action steps. Get after those. Um, thank you guys for having me. Danelle, thanks for setting it up. Hopefully this was really valuable. I did record it. I'll get you the recording and uh, I'll send that over to you in the morning. But uh, thanks for having me, guys. God bless you. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much, Thank Eric. You very Have much. a great night. My pleasure. Have a great night. Thank all. you. Thanks.